Doug Peterson, year number one as an NFL head coach. Marvin Lewis, his 14th year here in Cincinnati. Let's check in downstairs for the first time today with Peter Schrager. Hi, Peter. Tom Eagles, number one wide receiver. Jordan Matthews is out with an ankle injury, which means all eyes are on Nelson Aguilar, last year's first round pick. Aguilar, a very curious six days. He was a healthy scratch against Green Bay on Monday night. Today, he'll be their number one, and it's because of his mental stuff, not physical. He was dropping the ball. So this week, during practice, Doug Peterson had to meet with some medical professionals and also had a camera to monitor his every move and see what's going on. First time he touches the ball will be an interesting one today. Boy, it sure will. That's something to keep an eye on. And Charles, we'll get to that here in just a second. The Eagles won the toss, elected to get the football, and they'll get it at the 25. Led by number 11 there, 23-year-old rookie quarterback out of Bismarck, North Dakota. Grew up a Minnesota Vikings fan, idolizing Brett Favre, and he's on his way to potentially setting an all-time NFL rookie record for completions per game. Interesting young man, and it was fun to meet with him yesterday, and I asked him about his number's sake in Philadelphia. The Dutchman, Norm Van Brocklin, they could not be more diametrically opposite. <laughs> Polar opposites in personality, but he wants what the Dutchman brought Philadelphia, and that's a world championship. Let's keep an eye on Aguilar. He wears number 17. He's at the top of your screen, defended by Adam Jones. He'll turn around and hand it off to Smallwood. He'll get the bulk of the carries, and he'll be run out of bounds for a three-yard loss. Vinny Ray, the first one to meet him. A lot of changes on that offensive line. It's been well documented here over the last four weeks. And Peter just talked about Nelson Aguilar trying to get his game together. Jordan Matthews out. So I think they're going to be more centric with the tight end. And that Zach Ertz really needs to step forward now and forge a connection with Carson Wentz today. That's a two on the first down carry by Smallwood. So from the 23, it's second down and 12. Batted down at the line of scrimmage, and I don't know if there's any team in football that does a better job of that than that man right there, their pro bowl in, Carlos Dunlap. And this is this is his 11th of the year doing that, and last week against Baltimore, the last drive of the game, I mean, it was unbelievable. Andy Dalton suffered it against Baltimore. So because Cincinnati's saying turnabout is fair play, Dunlap, if he can't get to the quarterback, he gets one of those big arms in the passing lane and affects the play. Philadelphia on third down and 10 or longer on the year is 3 of 48. Right? Good protection. Nearly intercepted with an eye on Doriel Green Beckham. If Ray gets that head turned around a little quicker, that's going the other way. And he reads it really well. Stepping back into the lane, Vinny Ray, number 57. Wentz thought he had an open target, but Ray sees it the whole way. Breaks on the football, and it goes right through, and actually hits Doriel Green Beckham. So he had the right target. Good play by Ray. Very short punt by their Pro Bowl punter, Donnie Jones, and the Bengals will get outstanding field position very near the 50-yard line, just a 30-yard punt. So on the other side of the ledger, you have a veteran quarterback in his sixth year, and that's Andy Dalton. Six consecutive seasons, 3,000 passing yards or more, the second longest all time. Look at that number by Peyton Manning, 16 <laughs> of them. And Andy Dalton now has the ball on offense, and he needs to pay off what his defense just did. That's the first time in five games the Bengals didn't give up an opening drive touchdown. They've got to go ahead and make that stand up. Turn around and hand it off. Jeremy Hill looking for room and not much there. The offensive line for this Bengals team, Charles, has been an enormous disappointment. This was considered one of the best in all the football coming into the year, and it hadn't played out that way, although Whitworth is doing his thing. He is continuing to do his thing. He was first-team All-Pro last year. He's the anchor of that offensive line. If they're going to get anything generated in the run game, it starts with Andrew Whitworth, still one of the best in the league. Easy, easy, five, three. Two, right. Go. <laughs> Going to throw it on second down and right on target and that is Brandon LaFell and that will move the chains to the 41 yard line. Watch LaFell top of your screen number 11 in the orange jersey. Short motion back towards the line of scrimmage. 
A nice, precise route. You notice how the ball was out of Andy Dalton's hands before LaFell even finished his route? Really good connection between the two. Knew where he needed to get to. Dalton trusted he would be there and delivered a strike. You know, you look at the last four losses by this Bengals team, they have come by a combined 10 points. You always hear so much about it's a game of inches or a play here or a play there. I mean, they could be a 7-3 and three team rather than 3-7, and seven, but you are what you are. Jeff Triplett, our referee today. And 10 points in the fourth quarter in five games yeah. doesn't get you anywhere. Neutral zone infraction, defense number 96. Five-yard penalty, still first down. It's Benny Logan, you, know, you talk about the Bengals' offensive line. What about the defensive line by Philadelphia? Very little trouble they're giving opposing quarterbacks right now. Fletcher Cox hasn't had a sack in his last seven games. All attention on him. But he draws doubles and tri double and triple teams. The other guys have to get home and start affecting the offense. So first and five after the penalty, and Hill with good running room. And he'll be very close to a first down. Needed to get to the 29-yard line. Hill, a 1,000-yard rusher as a rookie. Little more than 700 last year and on that kind of pace this year. And watch Hill with the vision. Sees this play, starts left and breaks it back to the center. See how they block zone blocking, everyone stepping left in the offensive line, pushing their people down, and the cutback lane right there in the middle. You see Eric Winston, number 73, starting at right tackle for Cedric Obwehi today. Nice block, sealing the inside. Yep. Just short, it spotted in the first down, so second and one, and they're gonna throw it. Dalton rolling across the middle of the field, and it is caught by James Wright. He'll be getting playing time today in the absence of A.J. Green and another Bengal first down on the 15-yard completion. How about taking advantage of Andy Dalton's mobility? James Wright comes from left to right all the way across the field. And what they did was they gave Andy Dalton three targets in his sight line at varying levels downfield, short, medium, and long. And he selected the medium target in James Wright and put it on him for a nice catch in the third first down. So after a three and out defensive stand to begin the game, a short punt. Now the Bengals are inside the red zone. Hill slips through for a couple of yards on first down. Hill had just 21 rushing yards against a very stingy Baltimore defense a week ago. He did catch six passes out of the backfield, which is trying to make up for some of that. You're missing in Giovanni Bernard. But the red zone has been deaf for the Bengals pretty much the whole year long. Last week in Baltimore, five times inside the red zone, scored a total of 10 points. Dalton will just throw it away. Third down coming up. The coverage of Philadelphia was so good that it led to Andy Dalton having to make a veteran play. And what I mean by that is, he didn't force anything. See? Covered. Nowhere to throw it there. Covered. Covered over on the sideline. So he makes the prudent decision and throws it out of bounds and brings up a third down with a good chance. Third down and nine. They need to get to the five. Burkhead out of the backfield, and they find or try to find him. It was nearly picked off, and Burkhead screaming for a pass interference penalty. Nigel Bradham in coverage, and Burkhead can't believe it. Well, they got the isolation they wanted, which is Burkhead the running back on the linebacker Bradham. And Bradham takes away the outside. Burkhead gets inside, and right there it looked like Bradham may have hooked him as he made his cut to the inside. See, he's on the body before the ball gets there. But no flag. Bengals fans will be upset, and now Mike Nugent has to try it out onto the field. Been a rough year for this young man who grew up about 45 minutes north of here in Centerville, Ohio. He's missed his last three extra points, but this field goal try is good from 32 yards away. So a good start for Nugent and the Bengals. Wentz and the Eagles back on offense when we return. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Yes, to little bears with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Bengals out to a 3-0 lead. 
Late plays, 39 yards. Bengals feeling like uh, Philadelphia got away with one, perhaps. I thought he hooked him inside, Tom. I thought on the route, when Bradhams went to the outside, that was a mistake first and foremost. Bradham needs to take away the inside on any type of a pass route. I thought he hooked it when he got inside of him. They got away with it. The Bengals end up with three. So once again, it'll be Wentz coming out to the 25-yard line. They went three and out his first time. Of course, he found out eight days before the season after the trade of Bradford, he would be the starter. And the Eagles came out rolling. Three and one, seven touchdowns, one interception. But as all rookie quarterbacks will, Charles, they start to catch up with you a little bit. Last seven, seven interceptions, only four touchdowns. You do a lot of baseball. You've seen a lot of pitchers come up and blow people away. You've seen a lot of hitters come up and hit 450. And once they get a little bit of a book on you, a little bit of a read, they start coming at you with different things. You have to make the adjustment. The thing about this young man, I think he's making those adjustments and will continue to do so. Look at this formation. They hand it off. And that is Smallwood. And it's a gain of a yard, maybe two. Carlos Dunlap leading the charge, and they do have some very talented players on this Cincinnati defense. Well, he's already affecting the game as Carlos Dunlap. We just saw the tackle there on the first series. He batted a ball away on a, on a pass attempt. He gets home on the pass rush, and when he does it, those big, long arms affect throws by all quarterbacks. Dunlap, 13 and a half sacks a year ago, went to the Pro Bowl. He leads him with six and a half this year, and as Charles mentioned, 11 batted passes at the line of scrimmage. They're going to run it again on second down, and again it's Smallwood, and you can run on this Bengals defense. They're giving up a little better than 120 rushing yards per game, and that's a first down. And this is where you have to get your secondary involved, because watch the Bengals front. They're going to chop a little bit of a hole, but let's see what secondary player is up to fill. See, everyone's kind of there, and here comes Sean Williams, number 36. He's got to make that tackle. He's filling unblocked in the hole, and right there, which is a, actually a forte of his in tackling people, he missed one there and allowed extra yardage for Smallwood. Smallwood, a fifth-round draft choice out of West Virginia. Kenyon Barter will check in the backfield, replacing Smallwood. They set up the screen, and Dunlap nearly intercepted it, make it 12 batted balls, although he'd like to have that one in the INT column. And it wasn't just the athletic play of Dunlap. Watch the mental process here. Because he reads it. He feels it. He fe See? Oh, 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 oh. I said something. There it is. And he was right there in the passing lane. I think he'll get a few more ball drills this week in practice to work on that. But already in this game, Carlos Dunlap having quite an impact. And already two missed interception chances for this Bengals defense. Ray, who injured his thumb a moment ago. And now Dunlap... Two Wentz passes right through their hands. Big hit delivered. And the ball popped up in the air. They were looking for Aguilar. And a big hit by the veteran Adam Jones. And Jones is the one shaking up. Right out here. Senses it. Breaks on it. Big pop. But look at Aguilar stay with it. Big hit. That? But could anyone need that catch more than Nelson Aguilar? And how about the way to get it? This game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. Beer with your team on it. Adam Jones appears to be okay over on the sideline. He is out of the game. It is a third down upcoming for Philadelphia. And Aguilar had that one fall right in his lap. And as Charles mentioned, we'll hear from Peter Schrager in a moment. This young man, to quote his coach, battling a lot of demons right now. Young fellow grew up in Tampa. Played collegiately, starred collegiately at USC. And right back in there today, third down and eight. Things open up. And now Wentz trying to get to the first down marker, which he will do. He runs it much better than a lot of people think he does. He's a good athlete. Yeah, we went over that last time. Now watch Wentz's vision, because that's the thing. He's going to be back there, freeze it. So what he's seeing right now is that opening for him to take off and go. And he does so, but notice how he keeps his eyes up, gets a small ball fake trying to hold the linebackers, which he did just enough of with Vontez Burfick to allow his exit to the sideline and a first down. Hey, 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 hey. 
Flag salute the field, and of course, uh, false the starts on each side. Number the other way. offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. You know, for more on Aguilar's story, let's check in downstairs with Peter Schrager. Yeah, Tom, we spoke with Coach Doug Peterson. I said, hey, we've seen Steve Sachs, Chuck Knobloch, countless golfers go through stuff. Is it like that? He said, absolutely. We can't have them in the tank. It's all mental, not physical. They had sports psychologists who are on staff with the Eagles deal with Nelson Aguilar all week long. they got to get him out of this. They need him today. Yeah, Peter, and no, I've known this young man since college, and he is a worker. He's not one of those guys that's gone in the tank and is not putting extra time in, extra time before and after practice trying to break this slump. So he's had drops, been a big problem for him. That one is caught by Green Beckham crossing midfield. He had drops, he had the penalty uh, that cost him a touchdown against Seattle. He had really the, 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 the mental just blow up after a game because everybody says blowing things about this young man as a as a person listen he, he came out of high school running back had to turn himself into a wide receiver USC an absolute technician there and then he comes here big expectations things haven't gone as well the frustration welled up they gave him the break last week they need him to step forward today with Jordan Matthews out go that time by the veteran Darren Strolls dropped for a two-yard loss it'll bring up another third down and nine now remember Philadelphia's had to change their offensive line some with injuries Alan Barber normally starts at left guard he's been at right tackle the last couple of games watch what's happening here look how he's got controlled there by Marcus Hunt number 99 at the line of scrimmage so no one can get outside so at that point everything has to go back inside Demata Pecco number 94 the first one there Excellent job by Hunt, 99 controlling, number 76, Barber. And they've been waiting on Hunt, a second round pick three years ago. It's not been the player they were hoping. Third down, blitz coming. Philadelphia picks it up, and Wentz cuts it loose. Incomplete, a little too tall for the 6'5", Green Beckham. And the Eagles will punt again. Partner, when they pick up the blitz this well, Watch what all this group does here, because watch all the orange shirts coming at them. Did a little X-blitz, X-stunt, right? They crossed. Perfect number 55 and number 96 Dunlap. So when they do all that, Doriel Green Beckham at 6'5", needs to go up and catch that football. All right, they do all that. You've got to help them out. Jones, a 30-yard punt his first time, put the Bengals in great field position. And here's Erickson. And he's wrapped up and tackled at the 18-yard line. 5.44 to play in the opening quarter. And the Bengals out to an early 3-0 advantage. Today's game is sponsored by Amazon Echo. Information, music, news, and more. Just ask. By Hyundai, an official sponsor of the NFL. And by the $10 any carryout deal from Pizza Hut. Only at Pizza Hut. A little hot stove league baseball, a huge event in downtown Cincinnati at the convention center over the weekend. Reds Fest, you saw Joey Votto and maybe a future Joey Votto there. That Love that. Love that. Look at the ball control there. Philadelphia leading in time of possession, second in the league coming into the game. First down carry and nowhere to go for Jeremy Hill. Nigel Bradham, the first one there to spin him around. This December from the producer of Empire. Follow three talented singers, they struggle to find fame. Star, featuring Queen Latifah, Benjamin Brandt, and how about Lenny Kravitz? Special premiere December the 14th after the Empire Fall finale. I'm still old, I'm old enough to remember watching Lenny Kravitz's mother. You brought this up yesterday. On network television, on the Jeffersons, is Helen Willis, Miss Roxy Roker. <laughs> So four on first down, they set up the wide receiver screen, and they'll get back only a couple of yards from the original line of scrimmage. So third down, eight or nine coming up. Tackle made by one of many local connections to the city of Cincinnati, this young fellow Jordan Hicks. Grew up about 20 minutes north of downtown, went to Lakota West High School. What's a great conference he plays in, a greater Miami conference here in Cincinnati. 2009. And decided to go to the University of Texas wide open LaFell. How does a guy on third and nine get that open all the way to the 44-yard line? 
Jim Schwartz, the defensive coordinator of Philadelphia, is asking that exact same question. Watch LaFell number 11. It's zone coverage, and he found the spot between the corner and the safety. It's what we call sat down in there. So he got right in between the two of them, established himself, and showed his numbers back to Andy Dalton, saying, I'm open. And Dalton put it right on him. A really well-run route by Brandon LaFell. It's a 23-yard gain on a third down and nine. And Dalton play action. The man he faked it to dumps it off to Hill. We mentioned he had six catches a week ago. You know, you look at the, the duo of A.J. Green and Giovanni Bernard just in the passing game alone. The two of them this year had combined for 105 receptions, over 1,300 passing yards. And, and if we want to take it one step farther, and I'm going to, Mohamed Sanu, Marvin Jones, also no longer here. They left last year free agency to go to Atlanta and, De and uh, Detroit, respectively. Still trying to find people to step up for them, although the rookie Tyler Boyd is coming along. Will appear to be shaken up after being dragged down on that reception. Second down. And Burkhead looking for some kind of running room. And ran into his own man. Cody Core, who had just checked into the game. Cody Core was, was messed up on this one because I think he thought he was supposed to come back and run ghost motion, meaning come back and get that fake. But look at him coming back, or he came way too late. And he ended up being the tackler first for the Philadelphia Eagles. He should get credit for this play because he stopped all momentum for Rex Burkhead and held him up for the rest of the Eagles to get there. Core's a rookie out of Mississippi. Doesn't play much in their regular offense. There are a lot of guys, Core and James Wright, Burkhead getting playing time now with the injuries they've had the last three weeks. Third down, and Dalton looked for the big ball. And it's caught by Core, And he is dragged down at the five-yard line. What a throw. And that's the biggest catch for Cody Core in the National Football League. What a bounce back for Cody Cora. Working against Nolan Carroll. Gets a release inside and outside. Now watch him here. You see how Cora just stayed with it? A lot of young receivers, when they get jostled downfield by a defensive back, it throws everything off. But what Cora did was he actually fought the momentum of Carroll with his own and stayed with Look at the eyes. They stayed with the ball the entire way. They didn't come back and look at Nolan Carroll. That's a well-run route by Cody Cora. A mature route by the rookie. And that is his first NFL reception. How about that? Hill dancing around, cuts it back to the inside. He's from the five, down to the three. I know teams do not care how they score, Tom. You know that, right? Just get the ball in the end zone. No doubt about it. But to me, this Bengals team is in dire need of pushing that offensive line and creating space and letting a ball carrier carry it in. You know, they don't want to trick them here. They'd like to be able to rally, you know, just go right out, punch someone, and get in the end zone. Let's see if they go in that direction. Well, when they're looking for a touchdown running the ball, that's always Jeremy Hill. And he finds the end zone here. That is his seventh rushing touchdown of this season. Watch the push they get here. Bodine 61, Zeitler 65, and then over to the others, I mean Zeitler 68, Bowling was 65, and it ripped, the hole really came to the right side between Bodine 61 and Zeitler 68, and Jeremy Hill's vision found it and found the end zone. And now all eyes on Nugent, who has missed his last three extra points, starting with his head coach. And it's good, and they celebrate at Paul Brown Stadium. Ah, the little things when you're three and seven. But they're out to a good start. Core, his first NFL reception, sets up the touchdown. You know, you look at the Bengals and call it the brain drain, if you will. The coordinators they have lost in recent years. Mike Zimmer was a defensive coordinator here. Now the head coach, of course, in Minnesota. Jay Gruden, the offensive coordinator, head coach in Washington. And then this year, Hugh Jackson, now the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Charles, what's that do to the rest of your staff and to an entire team? Well, you brought it up in our meeting last night. It's not just those three guys, as significant as they are, but typically when they go to start their own program, 
they take a couple of guys with them as well, who, you know, or some up and coming guys that you've been training in your pipeline. So you have to rebuild more of a staff. It's not just one position. It may be two, three, four positions, and maybe guys have to shift maybe responsibility. So it takes some time to adjust. 10-0 Bengals after the Jeremy Hill touchdown. Charles, I'm going to let you dance a little bit like Jeremy Hill here. There you go. A little more bounce to the outs, baby. Back in Cincinnati, you know, you saw that uh, note a moment ago there, Charles. 27 rushing touchdowns over the last two and a half years for Jeremy Hill. That's tied for most in the NFL with DeMarco Murray. I think you'd lose a lot of money on that bet. <laughs> about who's two behind Murray? Absolutely. Agreed. First time run for Smallwood. It's quite interesting yesterday talking to Doug Peterson, the head coach of the Eagles, about Wendell Smallwood, a rookie who, you know, came into camp. We mentioned a fifth round pick. Clearly behind Matthews and Sproles on the depth chart. You could probably make an argument behind Kenyon Barner. But after watching him during training camp, they believe big things are in order for this young man. They think he can be a three-down back, which we probably didn't expect to hear. And he'll have to be today because Darren Sproles is playing with a broken rib. So don't expect him to be a heavy-duty ball yeah. carrier. And Ryan Matthews is out again today. Smallwood grew up in Wilmington, Delaware, and grew up a Philadelphia Eagles fan. They figured to him. And now Wentz pulled the trigger, pulled it back. He'll run and slide short of a first down by at least a yard, maybe two. So the run blocking hasn't been superb today so far for Philadelphia, but I think their pass protection has been pretty good. But what foils this play is the coverage downfield. See Wentz going through all of his progressions. He doesn't pull the trigger, which means he has no one downfield, but he has excellent legs and will use them to try yeah, and pick yeah. up first downs. He got close on that run. Well, they don't have to run this play. They get it off on third down and two, and Smallwood turns the corner. And on the final play of the opening quarter here at Paul Brown Stadium, it is a first down Philadelphia. A big start for the Bengals out to a 10-0 lead. Doug Peterson and the Eagles hoping to turn around some of these numbers, picking up a first down on the small wood carry, the final play of an opening quarter, which they've fallen behind statistically, and most importantly, only importantly, the 10-0 Bengals lead. So from the 36, they're going to throw it on first down, and Wentz, well protected, throws high. He missed Smallwood at about the 42. You know, you go back to Wentz, and he barely played in the preseason, number two pick overall in the draft out of North Dakota State. He had a rim injury, and he was going to back up Sam Bradford. Then eight days before the season started, after Teddy Bridgewater got hurt in Minnesota, Bradford was traded to the Vikings. Yeah. And they told Wentz, you're the guy. And he has been the starter ever since. Came out of the gate 3-0, had the route of Pittsburgh, and as Sproles is dropped after a three-yard game. We'll get back to Wentz in a moment. A third down coming up, and we check in with Kurt Benefee back in Los Angeles. All right, leaders of the NFC North, the Detroit Lions are up to a 10-0 lead down in New Orleans. Theo Riddick, little one-yard touchdown catch. His fifth of the season leads all NFL running backs. And as we said, the same score as your game. Tom, Charles, and Peter. Charles, are you a believer in those Detroit Lions? Today will stamp everyone as a believer if they win in New Orleans. I heard our guys in the pregame show. I'm not sure people believed in Detroit, but they win in New Orleans today. Look out. What's the call? Third down and seven, just a four-man rush. And a big hit, but Green Beckham hangs on. Took a big shot for a Philadelphia first down. And this is what they're counting on from Doriel Green Beckham. 6'5", nearly 240 pounds, goes inside and able to absorb the big contact. I believe Sean Williams hit him at the end of the play. Look at this. Ball's behind him a little, catches it, absorbs the hit, and, and completes the process of the catch. Remember earlier in the game on that blitz? 
miss the pass downfield. They need the consistency from him, but they, they do believe he's coming along. First down, they're going to throw it. And the catch is made on the far side. And that is Aguilar. You know, the other one sort of fell into his lap. You'll take it any way you can get it, especially when you're going through it. He's going through, but that's a clean one right there. And that's two catches for Aguilar now. And neither one of them has been easy. And you see Doug Peterson, he's the play caller. See that pen in his right hand? He probably wrote himself a little note. I can keep going to Nelson because he's caught the first couple. See, if, if Nelson doesn't catch him, he writes himself a note. I'm not sure I can count on him today. So a good start for Nelson Aguilar. Right. Nothing dramatic, but just catching the ball was huge. Hey, four Jedi! Four Jedi! Four Jedi. Four Jedi. Where you got? Where you got, Kevin? Four Jedi! Four! Somebody, somebody, somebody! Blown dead before it ever got started. You heard that Jedi entering the conversation on that second down. That'll make our producer, Mark Teitelman, very happy. I believe he's a Jedi. More disturbingly, he believes he's a Jedi. <laughs> and that's a guy right there that they've got to find ways to get involved. And that's Zach Ertz, the tight end. Because they're not going to play huge downfield unless Bryce Treggs, the undrafted rookie, can sprint past people. So that intermediate passing game, Zach Ertz, he's got to take up some slack. A very talented tight end. And they need to make yeah. sure he touches the ball. Oh. Oh, Hurts with 38 receptions on the year for 373 yards. That looked like early movement again on the right side by the right tackle, Alan Barber. And boy, when you're lining up against Carlos Dunlap, you can understand. And it, ha and it hasn't been easy for him today. Dunlap has gotten to him a few times already, which I think precipitated this jump. Watch Barber 76. See, because he wasn't lined up over him, Dunlap was wide, right. but he knew he had to get out there to get him, and he was trying to gain that little extra to get out there to make sure Carlos Dunlap didn't get to his quarterback. And really, those numbers right there give you a firm idea of the way they played this season. Look, they've had a lot of false starts all year. Very short completion. That was the third false start of this game on that Philadelphia offensive line. But they're among the most heavily penalized teams in the NFL, whereas the Bengals, one of the most infrequently penalized teams in the league. Now, to your point, they come into the game averaging over eight penalties per ball game. Philadelphia does. They've had games with 13 and 14 penalties in a game. And false starts. They're in the 20s now and false starts for the season. That just doesn't help you no. run the offense very well and effectively. Especially on first down, all of a sudden you're first and 15. I mean, on this drive just a moment ago, they were second down and four. Now they're third down and nine. Again, good protection. And a bullet across the middle to Trey Burton, the backup tight end. And another third down conversion to the 34-yard line. Well, it starts with the protection because he had plenty of time to go through everything. Watch Burton, 47. A college quarterback, tight end, <laughs> H-back, you name it. He did it all there. And he's becoming an increasing, uh, an increased target for Carl Carson Wentz as the season has gone on. Another nice connection there. That's his 18th catch of the year. He has four of them in the last two games, and you can tack on another here. This is Sproles looking for a hole, and not one there. You know, one of the most reliable and productive and toughest players the Philadelphia Eagles have ever had in their organization is another guy who's enjoying a homecoming here today and that's their longtime standout tight end Brent Selleck grew up right here in Cincinnati and went to LaSalle High School not as much a part of the offense as he once was but man did Doug Peterson rave about him yesterday if they want to run the ball I'd have him on the field more often because he's a terrific blocker at the point of attack second down Wentz throws it short to Barner out of the backfield, another third and nine. Selleck stayed home and played collegiately at the University of Cincinnati. Nearly 400 receptions in his NFL career. He's had a tremendous career, only missed one game. And on this play here, see the pressure in Wentz's face, not able to really set. See him throwing off the back foot, which caused inaccuracy, but he was covered awfully well. Double covered with Kenyon Barner out in the flat. 
All right, so another third down and nine. They're four of six so far on third down to the Eagles today. And they run it. That'll be raising some eyebrows back in Philadelphia where they have such hardcore great fans that live and die with his franchise. Watch Carson Wentz. I think he's, I think he's trying to change the play and trying to get to something else and the ball gets snapped. You see him start to move forward a little bit? That's really an excellent catch by Wentz because I'm not convinced he thought the ball was coming at that point. He had to catch and execute the play right there and keep them in a spot to try and kick a field goal. Sturgis has hit four field goals this year from 50 plus. This one 51 and it's off the upright. Plenty of leg. It's starting to leak oil. Not a good sound. Game is sponsored by Chevrolet. More 2016 JD Power Dependability Awards than any other brand. And we just saw Caleb Sturgis with a long distance field goal attempt. Doinks it off the right upright. And the last time we were here, our crew was here against Buffalo. Mike Nugent missed two PATs, points after touchdown. That same pole, that same upright. Not doing the kickers any favors. And there'll be some kind of wind coming off the Ohio River from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. You know, the Eagles have clearly been one of those teams, Charles, and we'll see them from time to time. It's not a given, but teams who are so much better at home. Look inside just some of the numbers, and they are when they leave the city of brotherly love. And that's glaring, and especially when you get down to points per game, because at the end of it, that's all that really matters. More than double given up. You know, almost double given up when you, when you go on the road, and they're trying to solve that today. Great pursuit by Brandon Graham behind the line of scrimmage. And a third down and long upcoming for the Bengals. I think Brandon Graham has been their most consistent defensive line, but watch how he flattens down the line of scrimmage to chase down the ball carrier. See, he doesn't go too deep and have to readjust. He reads it so well, flattens down and runs down Jeremy Hill. Brandon Graham, they tried to play him an outside linebacker. He's a better scheme fit in this 4-3 as a defensive end. I think the Bengals were trying to get that play off before they looked at it. And a good thing they did. Catch made by the rookie out of Pitt, Tyler Boyd. There is a penalty flag behind the line of scrimmage. It might be a late hit. Might be on Graham First down in the legs. Number 55 in the defense. 15 yards and in the end of the play. First down. Came in low. See, because Brandon Graham, watch, watch 55 here, because this is where the penalty is going to be. As you noted, Tom, they get the playoff. He ends up working through Jake Fisher. Excellent job with his hands, but see, he's stumbling, and then he's lunging to the legs of the quarterback, and that's something that they keep a strong eye on, and the flag came out as a result. Graham, a number one pick out of the University of Michigan in 2010. He seemingly gets better and better every single year. He's had to go from a 4-3 to a 3-4 and a 4-3 again. Much better as a defensive end than outside linebacker. So first down at the 25 and looking for the end zone. And it's incomplete. LaFell in the corner. Jalen Mills, a rookie out of US or LSU in coverage. So Mills is 31 in white. Look at the top part of your screen. And his eyes go into the wrong spot. And what I mean by that is his eyes went towards the quarterback and he lost sight of LaFell. Then he had to scramble to try and catch up. Very fortunate that one wasn't completed over him. 7.33 to play until halftime. Dalton and the Bengals trying to add to a 10 0 lead. Second down, pump fake one way, come back screen the other way to Hill, leapfrogs and defended. And he's down to the 16-yard line, about two yards shy of a first down. This is a well-conceived play because watch the illusion and the trickery in a sense. Right there, freeze. Okay, so now he's got everybody trying to look this way and wants to go back to the opposite side. And they do. This is really a nice play by Bradham, 53, helping hold things up. And who was that coming in from the side that tripped it up? Looked like 21, Leotis McKelvin. Really nice play, giving it up for that one. 
They're down in two. They need to get to the 14. And they're going to run it. And Hill, I don't think he got there. Looks to be a yard short. So do you go ahead and kick it, or do you give it a go on fourth down and what would be a yard? Crowd wants him to go naturally, and they're getting up to the line of scrimmage. And they want to go quickly and see if they can gain an advantage here and maybe catch Philadelphia unaware. If they don't like it, they can get out of it. Try to push Andy Dalton forward, and timeout was called. I believe the Bengals were the team that called the timeout. That's correct. Mar Marvin Lewis. May have pulled a hamstring going down the sideline to get that timeout call. He didn't like what he saw with his offense getting to the line of scrimmage. He wanted to make sure of this play because they've been playing well so far. Now, a few years ago, Marvin tore an Achilles. But watch this. Look at him right here, moving down there. Well done by the head coach getting down and getting a timeout call because he wanted to make sure they were set with the play they liked. And he didn't like what he saw. So he's going to now go ahead and kick the field goal at this point. Lewis, a Pennsylvania native, grew up just outside of Pittsburgh, PA. He's done a he's done an outstanding job here in Cincinnati. You can talk about the 0 for 7 in playoff games. They've been to the playoffs six of the last seven, including the last five. But boy, he turned around one of the worst franchises into really one of the best in recent years. 33 yards and right down the middle for Nugent. He must feel like he's hit the lottery today. Well, for the second time, Philadelphia able to make a play and hold Cincinnati to a field goal. So a 13-0 lead here with 6.23 to play until halftime. So it's incumbent upon them right here, 6.23 in the second quarter. Offense has got to get moving. Be consistent, try to put some points on the board, and help out that defense is helping them. Barner will take a knee, two yards into the end zone. Then goes off to a big start, trying to end a long losing skid. This game on Fox is sponsored by Citizen Echo Drive Watches, powered by Light. 79 total yards of offense for the Philadelphia Eagles. Wentz has hit on six out of 12 for 48 yards. Had a nice drive put together the last time, which stalled on a third and nine. And then missing the field goal. First down, Burton up to the 31 yard line. NFL players, champions on and off the field, and they support so many causes that they care so much about in hopes of creating positive change. And this week, they are proudly displaying the charitable causes they champion on their cleats. Discover more of their personal tributes at NFL.com slash my cause, my cleats. And there's so many great causes these players are representing by what they're wearing. And for one of them, let's check in with Peter Schrager. Guys, Rex Burkett has Team Jack Foundation on his, and Team Jack was formed to raise funds for pediatric brain cancer research. You guys remember, Jack Hoffman was the young boy who ran the ball in the 2013 Nebraska spring practice. He was wearing Rex Burkett's jersey. Raise the website, teamjackfoundation.org. Great stuff, Peter, and great stuff from Burkhead. First down, and a third time, a Bengal has missed a sure interception. This time, it's George Iloka, the free safety. Boy, Wentz is living right here today. He certainly is, because he had the time, and he changed his look on his progressions. But when he came back on the last one, Iloka had locked in on it. See, he scans the field, and then when he turns it loose, he's got Adam Jones running underneath. And Iloka able to play the free safety and come over, and he should have intercepted that pass. Really, that was one that shouldn't have been thrown. Adam Jones is right there in the vicinity. Wentz is going to have to see that. Yeah. So a second down and 10. Dunlap breaks through, forcing the hurry pass, and he makes connection with Wentz back at the 25-yard line. They're going to have to do something here because Dunlap to the top of your screen. In this case, he comes inside. That was really well organized and well run because Geno Atkins, number 97, 
will get no credit for that play, Tom, but he did the best job he could. He ended up occupying two blockers from Philadelphia to clear an alley for Carlos Dunlap, who got right in the grill of Carson Wentz. And of course, Atkins is a four-time Pro Bowl defensive lineman. Third down and ten. Wentz stands tall and delivers a strike on another third down and long. You know, we brought up early in the game, the Eagles this year on third and ten or longer were three for 48. They have four of those in the game today. And how about Carson Wentz after taking that one to the chops? Stayed right in there and delivered that strike downfield. He's not easily dissuaded, is he? Tough kid. And came out of a, you know, a... A non-powerhouse college football program. I mean, in their division, their powerhouse, they won five straight national championships. North Dakota State, the Bison. And you got to make sure you get it. You got to pronounce it correctly, because otherwise, <laughs> it gets ugly. Oh, you better believe it. And that was a heck of a throw on third down. And real quick, I've got to go back. My cause, my cleats. Do you notice the diversity of causes that we saw on all those cleats? They will think that these guys out here playing this game are one-dimensional people. Think again. Right. These people care about people, care about society, and they're trying to make a difference. Second down, and it's Smallwood right to the 50. So third down and eight coming up, and we check in again in Los Angeles with Craig Menifee. All right, in snowy Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers trying to get the Packers their second straight win after they lost four in a row. This will help. Randall Cobb, nine-yard touchdown. He makes a snow angel afterwards. Why not? They're up 7 nothing over Houston. Tom, Charles, and Peter. Well, perhaps divine intervention they're looking for from the Packers came off that Monday night win. Rodgers was so good in Philadelphia. I talked with someone from Philadelphia in pregame, and he said, you know what we had on Monday night? I said, what's that? He said, we got Rodgers. He's not allowed. 26, 26. So another big third down. Go, Q, 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 go, go. And that was a disaster from the very beginning. It's a few times today that we've seen that they're a little bit out of sync. Number 76, five-yard penalty, still third down. You know what I mean, Tom? It's a few times we've seen already with Philadelphia not quite in sync in what they want to do. At one point, remember, we thought he was trying to change a play, and the ball got snapped, and, you know, it's just not quite there. And some of that offensive line shuffle has to be a part of that. Alan Barber, left tackle, now playing right tackle. How much help do you have to give him right now with Carlos Dunlap? who's really having a nice day. You know, Kelsey inside has got to control everything as the, as the center with all the line calls. There's a lot going on. So third and seven becomes third down and 12, and Wentz steps up and throws to the corner, incomplete with an eye on Green Beckham. So now the Bengals with two timeouts remaining and 325 till halftime will get the football back. And I think Carson Wentz would like to have this throwback because look at the route from Doriel Green Beckham. Where it gets the zone, he gets Drake Kirkpatrick inside and gets him turned, and he's wide open. And Carson Wentz airmails that one. And he had plenty of pocket, plenty of time, and he let that one go just too far. Alex Erickson from the six-yard line, back pedals inside the five, took a hit, and has stood up and run out of bounds at the seven. 3.14 to go until halftime. Eagles needing a win in the worst sort of way, getting roughed up so far. Take a look at this nugget from our crew downstairs, heading up by Jordan Wolf. Bengals for the first time since 2014 score on their first three possessions in a game. How about that, Jordan? First down, and here's Burkhead. And he's all the way up to the 24-yard line. Hey, there's a lot to like about Burkhead's game. And watch what he gets. Look at that backfield. Three people back there. Almost an old kind of wishbone, but look at that blocking. And then he gets the vision, gets to the open field, and Rodney McLeod finally makes a tackle in the secondary. What people have to remember about Rex Burkhead, he's one of the top backs in the country and hurt his knee. Opening game his senior year and wasn't right from that point on, and that hurt him in the draft. He's a quality running back who could do it all as a three-down guy. Well, he's been waiting for this opportunity for four years now with the Bengals with the injury to Giovanni Bernard. 
Gets it again, not room there. America's fastest growing sports show is on FS1. Tomorrow, we debate all of today's NFL action. And I'll tell you why the Cowboys won't make the Super Bowl. And you'll be wrong again. Undisputed, America's fastest growing sports show, 930 Eastern, FS1. Charles, I know you'll be dialed in tomorrow. Mr. Davis is always dialed in on FS1. Of course. Take us to the two-minute warning, of course. Locked in. Well, we invite you to follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Bengals with the football, the second down. And 10 from their own 23-yard line. Two minutes to play until halftime. Cincinnati leading 13 to nothing. Now the backfield, Burkhead. And it's run out of bounds by Nolan Carroll. Short gain. And that helps Philadelphia in a couple of ways. Number one, short gain. But number two, didn't have to spend a time out there if they had designs on trying to get the ball back, try and score before the half. Now you bring up the big third down. Cincinnati, <laughs> they don't want to turn it back to Philadelphia. Good field position. It's a big third down play. We got a bunch formation to the bottom of your screen. And Dalton in trouble. And he finds a way to get out of trouble. And then throws a first down strike to Burkhead. Pretty nifty work there by Andy Dalton. Now Carson Wentz we knew could run the ball coming out of college. I knew Andy Dalton could run it. 1,500 yards to TCU. Look at this play. Ducks his head but gets his eyes back downfield. Used his athleticism to extend the life of this play. And then throw a strike. Directs Burkhead for a first down. Well done by Andy Dalton. Block at 147. They're going to throw it again. The quick slant. And the catch is made by Core. His first two NFL receptions here today. Block running at 134. And the Bengals with a pair of timeouts. And now it's shifted to where the Bengals have gone on the attack. Burkett will pick up a first down to the 48. They'll probably spend a time out here. Or will they? Looks like they're still moving, oh. maneuvering. Lisa, halftime coming up. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy standing by to bring you up to date on what's going around the NFL. Dalton to LaFell. And he's trying to run through a tackle of McKelvin, and he's to the 45. Clock continues to run. This is interesting to me because at this stage, I would have thought they would have spent a timeout because they're in good, good attacks on here. Blitz coming. Dalton steps up, and it's incomplete. Clock stops, 31 ticks remaining. Well, they got the timeout in a different way. Didn't have to spend it, but I thought they would have used it back there with 40-something seconds to go on the clock, gather themselves a little bit, figure out what they wanted to do down the stretch. Here on third down now, pick up the first down Paramount to try and keep this, live, this drive alive. Burkhead has become an increasing factor in this game. Josh, Josh. Hey, go, Josh, Josh. Ninth play this drive, third down and two, and they'll get the first down. And that's Boyd, and he's run out of bounds at the 36-yard line by McKelvin. Clock stops, 25 seconds remain. To watch Tyler Boyd, who's become a great target on third down, run a little whip route. Takes him inside, back outside against Leotis McKelvin. I believe that's his 16th catch for a first down, third down for yes. a first down this year, which leads, I believe, all rookies in the NFL. Yes, it does. So on first down, Dalton, good protection, and it's the first time today we've called the name Tyler Eifert. Former first round pick out of Notre Dame, healthy again to the 24. Watch Eifert downfield and getting to the sideline. Got a free release, meaning no one off the line of scrimmage, affects his route at all. Easy pitch and catch between he and Andy Dalton. Tom, at the top of this game, we talked about how Andy Dalton was going to have to really step up and be that guy today. I think he's done that here in the first half for the Cincinnati Bengals. 
Dalton 14 out of 18, 188 yards so far. And a false start will back up the Bengals five yards. I think Tyler false start. Number 85 and 74. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. <laughs> Let's head it back to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll get you all caught up on all the action around the league. The Packers host Houston. The Dolphins going for their seventh straight win as they travel to Baltimore. And it all comes up next when we all get together on the desk for the Visa Halftime Show. All right, so now from a 29-yard line, Dalton finds Erickson. And he has a first down to the 13-yard line. you got to spend a time out now, don't you? Yes, they do. All right, Charles, 14 seconds left. You got a first down right about the 15-yard line. You know, it looked like when this drive began, the Bengals might be content to, you know, go for three. We wondered why they didn't take a timeout maybe earlier in the drive, right around the one-minute mark. Are you thinking now a shot or two to the end zone before that field goal try? At least one. And I've got to think about Eifert right here. This is, this is a, a big-time spot for him. They've thrown it to him in the red zone into the end zone plenty at 13 oh, yeah. touchdowns just last season. So he would be my first target in, in looking at it. I'm definitely taking one at the end zone before I decide to come back and maybe have to kick the field goal and get some points going into the half. Don't just hit on seven of eight on this drive. And look into the end zone for Eifert. And you call it, Charles Davis. That is a touchdown. What a closing drive to this opening half for Dalton and the Bengals. And here's Eifert, and they try and stack him up there a little bit with Brandon LaFell, close down the splits. But again, it's a free release. There's no one out there on him to affect his route running. So that gave him a two-way go against Rodney McLeod, the safety. Did he want to take it across his face into the middle or break it to the outside? It was an option. And Tyler Eifert chose correctly to the outside, and Andy Dalton dropped it right on him. Tom, Andy Dalton is leading them in a big way today. He's assumed that mantle of, I've got to do more, and he's been doing it this first half. Eifert has been often injured in his career since being a number one pick, but boy, when he plays, he is a touchdown machine. He is tied for the most touchdowns by a tight end in all the football, as that point after is no good by Nugent. You know, we've talked about Agamore and what he might be going through right now between the years. Same thing has to be happening for Mike Nugent. Well, 19-0, and Nugent has missed a point after for the fourth time in his last five tries. And here it is. And he knew it as soon as he hit it. And I just can't imagine what's going through his head right now. I remember when this whole thing started before the season began two years ago, I asked Jay Feely, what's it going to be like for kickers? You know what Jay said? He said, missing the extra point will cause more problems because that's supposed to be automatic. And that's what's happened to Mike Nugent. This guy's been a pretty darn good kicker for a long time in this league. But whatever it is he has going on right now, he has to be wondering, how soon can I get it straightened out? And it has to be real. Out here thought he wouldn't be around two weeks ago after the game. We, you know, you missed the, yep. the point after that should have been the difference in a win in London against Washington. The two point afters we saw missed here against Buffalo. They were a huge part of that game. And then last week again in Baltimore and here today. And and, and w w what I was saying before is because it's supposed to be automatic when you miss one like that, that gets in your head more, even though nowadays it's not automatic at 33 yards. You actually kick field goals of lesser distance. Well, it's a good, very good first half for Andy Dalton and the Bengals, leading 19-0. And we now go to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles for the Visa Halftime, which begins right now. Today's excitement brought to you by the new Nissan Titan. Well, when they're looking for a touchdown running the ball, that's always Jeremy Hill. And he finds the end zone here. Today's 
excitement brought to you by the new Nissan Titans. So Charles Davis, we talked to, with Doug Peterson yesterday, the head coach of the Eagles, and, and he said, look, we got three games against divisional opponents all at home the remainder of the year, but this is one to have any hopes for the playoffs. You have to win this game. No doubt about it. And he was saying we got to play the one-game mentality in order to get there. Well, so far it's been Cincinnati that's been playing with the one-game mentality. A little bit quicker to the ball, really on the balls of their feet and punching the whole first half. Here's where it's tough for Philadelphia in the second half now. They wanted to run the football. Now you're down big at the half. That means you have to throw it. That means all the pressure goes on that offensive line to try and keep Carson Wentz clean in order to try and make the throws to get them back into this game. Well, they have not come from behind to win a game, which they were trailing at the end of the first quarter this entire year. Now they've been tied in a couple of games, but not behind and come back to win. They'll try and do that today. We're underway in the second half. Erickson is slammed to the deck just across the 15 and let's check in downstairs with Peter Schrager. Hey Tom, I spoke with Doug Peterson, very calm, said we have to create our own energy. This building right now is not rocking. Let's create some energy and let's have fun and let's win this game. That's for Marvin Lewis. He was not thrilled with his team's third down defense and it's got to be better. And more importantly, I asked about Mike Nugent. He said, look, he's a veteran. Just go out there, kick the football. There's nothing I can say to him at this point. He's got to do his job. You know, it's interesting, Marvin Lewis, a lot of people that live here in Cincinnati, they sort of rolled their eyes when he said, hey, look, you know, we still have a chance. He acknowledged for the first time and after recent losses in each of their last three that they now need help. Yes. Where they had a chance going to Baltimore last week, Buffalo, we were here two weeks ago. But he is correct in that mathematically this is still a division which there is no clear great team and no front-running team that at least they wouldn't statistically have a chance to catch. Looks like they just offside number 52 kicking pain. The five yard penalty is going to be added on in the end of the play by the election of Cincinnati. And Cincinnati scoring on each of its four drives in the first half. First time they've done that in better than 30 games. Philadelphia shut out in the first half. First time in their last 23 games. And Nugent, a lonely man on that sideline. Jeremy Hill on first down, trying to cut it back to the inside, and he'll pick up close to three. It was interesting what you said about Marvin Lewis, and I get this reaction from a lot of fan bases who feel like their team's out of the playoffs, but it's not mathematical. Anytime the head coach says, well, you know, we still have a chance, just that people roll their eyes, oh, wait. But what do you expect him to say? That's right. What would you rather him say with your team still has a shot at it? Would you rather him say, oh, we're done for the year? I mean, that's kind of how it works. I'm trying to keep his team in it. Philadelphia read that beautifully right from the start. And that was a young man we mentioned earlier is from right here in Cincinnati that sniffed that out. And that was Jordan Hicks, second-year linebacker. AFC North standings, that's where they are. And that's why he said they need help. But in the loss column, they're only two back. And remember, Baltimore and Pittsburgh come here to play before this year is over. And that's what he, that's what he was telling his team. If we can win these games, have that opportunity, and get help, we still have a chance. Dalton looking for the long one to LaFell. And he got it in the 35-yard line. What a beautiful throw by Andy Dalton, who is having a huge game here today. 44 yards. LaFell, number 11, he's the outside guy here running the route. And you see him there running. And I believe that's Leotis McKelvin, number 21, running with him. And it's a nice call by Ken Zampezi because McKelvin's battling a hamstring. They wanted to see if he could stretch it out and run with LaFell. Well, you look at some of these completions. 44 yards, 50 yards to core, Boyd 21, Eifert 13, Wright 15, Erickson 16. Reminiscent of the game against Seattle, big plays killed this Philadelphia defense. And I think the thing that's really striking me, see Jim Schwartz, Stevens Gore shaking his head, is that not all of them have been easy throws either. Andy Dalton's throwing with great precision today and accuracy. And that can really affect you too. You got good coverage and also the ball's right in the hands of the receiver. 
Going to run it again to Hill, trying to turn the corner. And a good solid carry, which runs him out of bounds at the 26, and a flag comes in. And that was Bradham. Looked like he may have gotten him on the collar. Personal foul, number 53, the defense, horse collar tackle, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And you see at the end of the play, watch Bradham 53. He gets his hand right on the name plate, and that's part of the package now. It's not just your hand, not just getting inside the pads. You get up on that name plate area. They added that this year. That can be the horse collar as well. That was a textbook call there by the officials. They had it correct. Well, the Bengals trying to score for the fifth time on their fifth possession of the game. And here's Hill. He leapfrogs one defender, and he's down to the 10-yard line. Went right over Jalen Watkins. You know, the center for, for Cincinnati, Mr. Bodine, had some struggles last week in Baltimore. Russell Bodine actually got replaced for a couple of series by T.J. Johnson. I think today he's really upped his game. Things are really being held down well in the center of the center here. And that's not easy with Fletcher Cox and Benny Logan on the other side of him. Well, Bogan in his third straight year as a starter since being a fourth round pick out of North Carolina. Hill inside the 10 down to the eight yard line. It'll bring up third down. Here's Bodai, number 61. You wonder about his size. You wonder, can he handle power? And look at him there working against Bo Allen, number 94. Moved him and gave Jeremy Hill an opportunity. See, Bowling 65 also in that. Zeitler 67, Winston 73. And then the hole closed quickly with the rest of the Eagles. That was a nice job by Bodine, 61 on big defensive tackle, number 94, Bo Allen. Third down and five. You see, they need to get to the three to get a first down. Dalton to the end zone, touchdown, Brandon LaFell. And Andy Dalton is simply carving up this Philadelphia defense. He's closing in on 300 yards, and we just started the second half. And watch the, you know, watch this. You're going to see the route with the throw, because watch what he has to do with the throw. Brings it right there. Look over the top. He had to get over him and him and then able to get it to the back part of the end zone. That was a beautifully thrown football. And watch LaFell's concentration, catches it, both feet down into the back of the end zone for another touchdown. You're exactly right, Tom. He's carving up the Philadelphia secondary today. 18 of 23, 269 yards, and now a pair of touchdowns for Andy Dalton. And here comes Nugent, who missed his last one. And this one is good. Dalton, LaFell, 26 nothing Bengals. This game is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Zales. Celebrate your lasting love with gifts from Zales, the diamond store. And by Taco Bell's new Steakhouse Burrito and Steakhouse Nachos. Charles, you and I saw this Bengals team two weeks ago. They didn't have A.J. Green for the entire game. They didn't have Giovanni Bernard for about half of it. I would have never thought this coming into this game. Their first five possessions they have scored for the first time in the last 117 games the Bengals have played. They've had some good teams. Barner out of the end zone, and he's corralled at the 21-yard line. So the Eagles have work to do. Opening possession of the second half. LaFell the touchdown, 26-0. Twenty-six nothing Bengals. Philadelphia getting the football for the first time here in the second half. And Charles, you can't score four touchdowns on one possession. As much as you try. Yeah, that's right. And that's part of the issue for teams. You start to press just a little bit more, and that could lead to other mistakes. They take it one way on the run, Wentz slings it across the middle end. That reception made by the rookie Paul Turner. And a big gainer for Turner, the rookie out of Louisiana Tech. 
And they just signed him from the practice squad. I right? just brought him up not too long ago. This is Turner, 19. And similar to a route we saw earlier in the game from Cincinnati, where you have guys at varying levels, but in the same sight line as your quarterback, they got Wentz out of the pocket, they had Ertz in the short zone, Turner in the mid medium zone, and then had a receiver deep downfield to give him three opportunities to find a target, and he picked the right one in Paul Turner. And in the hands of Aguilar, and he's to the 32-yard line. How about the day so far of Carson Wentz, Charles Davis? Well, it started early. There's Carlos Dunlap batting a ball away. And you see Geno Atkins forcing him to throw one not entirely set. Then there's a big hit inside from Atkins. Then Dunlap with another big hit. So he's been harassed the whole game. It's not been easy for him. You see the knockdowns, been hit five times with 21 dropbacks. But to this young man's credit, he stands up and takes another shot net each and every time. He will stand in the pocket, and he will fire downfield. Well, he had the 41-yard play a moment ago to Turner. Similar kind of play here, and they go right back to it. To Turner again, and that is a first down inside the 25, and we send it to Carissa Thompson in Los Angeles. Hi, Carissa. Hi, Tom. A cold one in Chicago. No playoff implications here, but fantasy numbers still apply. Opening drive, second half. Jordan Howard with that two-yard score. Chicago's up. 14-6, to six, and you have got to be a diehard fan to be at this one. Tom? Well, you're not lying about that. I bet Chris has Jordan Howard in her fantasy team. She probably does. That's why she mentioned the fantasy points still apply. Oh, that's exactly right. That's a message. All those years that, that was a, the Big Ten, she Indiana guy. But that was a message to her opponent. I just scored. <laughs> Went, steps in there, batted down again. Domata Pecco, it looked like the 11-year Bengal getting a paw on that one. How about Jacob Bernie, the defensive line coach? He coaches these guys pretty well. If you can't get all the way back to the quarterback, what do you do? Hands up into the passing lane. And Pecco, who today, I believe this is what, his 103rd straight start in the regular season for Cincinnati? Nice job there. Another guy affecting a play, even though it's not a sack or a knockdown of the quarterback. He's been a very nice find all the way back to 2006 in the fourth round. They found Pecco out of Michigan State. Second down under heavy pressure, and this time it is picked off. After multiple times of missing the chance to get the interception, it's Vontez perfect. And there is a penalty flag down on the play. I know Pecco was there at the end of the play with a hit on Wentz, which is probably what Jason Peters is taking offense to because offensive linemen do not like to see their quarterback getting hit. And this is where you're that time of game where the pressure is going to increase. And Pecco with the big shot on Wentz. And then he falls on him at the end of it. I don't think any of that was what you would After call the deliberate. After the interception, and when the ball is dead, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 94 of the intercepting team. Half the distance to the goal, first down, timeout. Well, it's like a Redwood falling on top of you. It has to be something after he fell on him. There had to be something else. This game is sponsored by the all-new 2017 Ford Super Duty. This is the next level. Go back to that interception, heavy pressure again on Carson Wentz. And already down 26 points, here comes the pressure. Look to the right of your screen, Carlos Dunlap, who's having a huge day. He gets the arm of Carson Wentz, leads to the interception by Vontez Perfect. Look at that right there. And that affected it. And then look to it right there, 94, Pecco took a run at Jason Peters at the end of the play. Remember we said it wasn't him falling on the quarterback that was the penalty? That was the penalty. Took the run at Peters after the interception. So instead of the ball to 28, they back him up to the 14. And a first down carry by Hill, who's had a very quiet day. 15 rushes for 22 yards. But it has been the Bengals passing game, which has just shredded this Philadelphia defense today. Dalton only five incompletions of his 23 attempts. 200 and 69 yards. Look at this formation. And let's get exotic, folks. Bunch here, bunch here. What are they going to do with it? Well, the first option wasn't there. 
And then they turn and throw it to a guy who can't catch it, and that's Eric Winston. So you see the bunch here and the bunch here, and what they're trying to do is get a slant right there, and it's not there. So once you have the slant, now he's got to come out of that, and Eric Winston looks like he's wide open. Now, if that had been Jake Fisher, number 74, remember Fisher last yep. year? They used him as the extra guy. They actually threw a pass to him last year and used him as an H-back late in the season. And now third down and forever. That's Burkhead out of the backfield trying to beat a couple of defenders, but good tackling by the Eagles, and a flag comes in. They might have gotten above the neck on the tackle. That I mean, you know, above the shoulders on the tackle. That might be what we're going to get the call on. And you had him easily stopped short of a first down. They, they had everything you wanted. Three guys to the ball, had him wrapped up, tackled, and that might be what it, what it was. Personal foul. Hit on the defensive receiver, number 26 in the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So that is Jalen Watkins. So they've got him wrapped up here, Rex Burkhead, and that's the hit right there. You see the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact from Jalen Watkins, number 26, on Rex Burkhead. Yep, crown of the helmet, goes right into the, right into the helmet of Burkhead. And there was the call. I don't know what Watkins is arguing about. I mean, that's as plain as day. Yeah, Jeff Bergman had the call there, number 32. Right back in the hands of Hill, trying to turn the corner. And run out of bounds to the 37. Let's go downstairs, and another penalty flag comes in. This might be Bradham for a second time on a similar play with Hill going out of bounds. Last time it was a horse collar. Could he have gotten into him too late? Was he into the white on the sideline when the tackle was made? First foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 53. Late hit out of bounds. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, this is starting to get brutal. There's Jeremy Hill, number 32. Getting wrapped up there by Bradham. They're in the field to play there. As he takes him over the sideline. I don't know about that. What do you think? I, I, I'm, having, I'm struggling with it because, to me, he started to tackle well in bounds. He's right. completing it out of bounds. I'm not sure where the unnecessary roughness is. Hill again down to the 45-yard line. That's 10 penalties now against the Eagles. That is the fifth time this year in their 12 games. They've been hit with 10 or more penalties. And it's an interesting deal with penalties, isn't it? Because most of the teams that lead in the NFL or even in college football have a good amount of penalties but they're typically on the defensive side of the ball aggressive style penalties and people overcome them but when you have some of the penalties the Eagles have all the ball starts and things of that nature to stall your offense that kills you Dalton looking down the sideline and the reception is made by the rookie Tyler Boyd he beat Jalen Mills and it's first down Bengals into 15 so you know for these receivers here in Cincinnati, they've heard for the last couple of weeks, no A.J. Green, who's going to step up? Tyler Boyd's been fashioning a very nice rookie year. He keeps getting better. But they've also had help today. Cody Core with some big catches. James Wright with some catches. Alex Erickson got involved today. And Brandon LaFell stepped up as a veteran, trying to pick up the slack for A.J. Green. Ball spotted at the 16-yard line. Bengals trying to score on their sixth consecutive possession. No gain on first down. Let's check in downstairs with Peter Schrager. Tom Charles just mentioned these names. Cody Core, Alex Erickson, Tyler Boyd. Well, one of the guys that were hopeful that would make an impact today, James Wright, just left the game with a knee injury. Questionable to return. Back to you, boys. And that has plagued Wright throughout his very young career after coming out of LSU. He had a microfracture knee surgery during the offseason. Big day today for Dalton. And we're just barely midway through the third quarter. Miami, well, the Bengals, as you suggested earlier, I mean, they just keep running the ball. Hill's not doing a whole lot, but he's getting it a plenty. Averaging less than two yards per carry in this one. And with the score at 26 to 0, 
They're not worried as much about the yardage, but they're loving seeing this. Clock keeps ticking. Run the football, keep winding the clock down on them with a 26-point lead. Not as worried about yards per carry at this stage. Third down and nine from the 15-yard line. What a great throw. Short of a first down, a back shoulder catch made by Bowie. And will the Bengals go for it? No, they're going to take the conservative route again and kick the field goal. Yeah, and you see Andy Dalton, he wants to go for it there. But I think this is also Marvin Lewis trying to help that guy out right there, Mike Nugent. He's going to keep trotting him out there with a 26-point lead. Let's see if we get Nugent going again. Let's give, him, let's give him a kick, make him feel better about himself. I know you want to throw one, Andy, but hey, <laughs> I, I, I need this guy back on the beam because this is essentially a point after touchdown. Shorter. Nowadays, yes. 26-yard attempt, and it is good. So that makes it 29 nothing as Lewis applauds his kicker, Mike Nugent. Six possessions. Small screen, stadium size content. Watch live local Sunday games right on your smartphone with NFL Mobile. I'm not sure anybody in a million years saw this one coming today. This beat up Bengals team. You know, many wondering was the head coach Marvin Lewis in trouble? Was it, you know, time to really tie a ribbon around this Bengals season? It would be the first in five years not going to the playoffs. And they lead 29 to nothing here in the third quarter. Barner breaking it to the outside. Has a kicker to beat down that sideline, and Nugent delivers a hit to run him out of bounds. And a tremendous return by Kenyon Barner for a team down 29 to nothing, desperately needing a spark. Let's see where he gets the blocks. They block up there, and now he sees his vision bringing it back this way. Makes it makes Darquez Denard miss in the hole there. Outruns him, but look who makes the play. Mike Nugent, the kicker, who's missed the extra point again today. I think there's a little extra point frustration in that tackle no from Mike about Nugent. It. Might have been the best thing that happened to him all year long. Sixty yard return and from the 38 yard line wins all day to throw it and now a little flip pass to Ertz and he is chopped down immediately by Darquez Denard the number one pick out of Michigan State. But with the protection Carson Wentz had on this play that ball is supposed to be delivered downfield that tells me the coverage is excellent so he improvises and Darquez Denard all over that one. Ertz in this game has two catches for a grand total of six yards. And he'll add it out right here. First down to the 17-yard line, and we go to Carissa Thompson in Los Angeles. Thanks, Tom. We're headed to Atlanta. Kansas City was up 2016 on the road, but how about this? A fake punt direct snap to Albert Wilson. 55-yard run. They're up 27-16. That's a gutsy call, Tom. Reminds me a lot of you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carissa. And Carissa, if I'm not mistaken, Albert Wilson played at Georgia State which is that dome where they're playing today. That's right. As we like to say, Charles, it's always nice to hear a compliment Carissa throws our way because you're not going to get it from the wife. <laughs> so thank goodness for Carissa. She hooked you up. I like that. I am very grateful. Here's second down. And is that ball completed? No. Perfect right there on the coverage of Zach Ertz. Well, I tell you what, there are a lot of people that like Perfect. There are a lot of people that don't. But what cannot be denied is this guy is a player. No ifs, ands, or buts. I think he might have been there a little bit early. Yes, he was. But they have not shown the proclivity for pulling the flag on that type of a play all game long. Remember, Burkhead on the first drive of the game thought he was interfered with with Philadelphia. They didn't call it then. So they evened it up. But nice coverage by Burkhead. First time in the red zone today for the Eagles offense. Third down at five, and here comes a blitz. Wentz gets it away incomplete. They brought the house of the rookie quarterback. 
And when you're down 29 nothing, do you kick a field goal in the third quarter? I would not go ahead and try and get some, try and get a touchdown, but that's not up to me. But Paul Gunther, the defensive coordinator, he decided, okay, I've seen my offense get exotic with the wild formations. I'm coming after this rookie quarterback here. And I'm going to force a quick decision under duress. And there was no one home after the throw. Philadelphia 14 times has gone on third down. Seven times they have been successful. On fourth down. Play clock at one, and they don't even get off the play. Did they get the timeout? Timeout. Philadelphia, they're first. Think Doug, 30 second time out. think Doug Peterson saw Marvin Lewis's sprint earlier and decided to match one. You know, Charles, um, obviously a disappointing day here so far for Doug Peterson. Conversely, there has to be some credit for Marvin Lewis and his staff here on this game. I mean, it, you know, when you're used to going to the playoffs and playing in big games as they've been over the last seven years, you're 3-7-1, and one, to show up and play the way they have played today speaks volumes about Lewis and his staff, regardless of where it all ultimately leads. I would agree with that. With, to, to Marvin, is it, Marvin Lewis is the head coach, the staff, as you mentioned, and to the pride of the players. Because at 3-7-1, seven and one, you got to be convinced that there's still a shot at the playoffs. There's still something to play for. They've shown a lot of pride and professionalism in how they've approached today. Goal, goal. Right, so they got the timeout. Yeah, yeah. No penalty. It's fourth down and five. They need to get to the eight. Wentz. Backs up, throws in the end zone, wide open. And that is a touchdown for Zach Ertz, his second of the year. Clearly a breakdown in coverage here, and Adam Jones having a conversation with his safety. Watch Ertz here, because he's going to find himself clear, because other people are coming across the seat right there and there. And then Ertz able to break to the back part. And now the discussion begins amongst the defenders of Cincinnati who was supposed to have him who was covering I saw Vontez Burford very upset and you see George Iloka 43 and Adam Jones 24 because all defenders like to pitch a shutout point after is good by Sturgis so the Eagles are on the board their first score with 230 left to go in the third 29-7 been a tough day for the rookie Carson Wentz, although he does just connect with that man walking away from him for a touchdown a moment ago. Zach Ertz, been a banner day for Dalton. He, we mentioned it at the top that he was going to have to be the difference today for Cincinnati, that it wasn't going to be the other guys around him. He has led, and they followed in a big way, and he's increased a lot of people's production. Now to the 25. You know this weekend we're paying tribute to the events at Pearl Harbor 75 years ago. Fox Sports is proud to support merging vets and players and its mission of ensuring our nation's warriors can be as productive off the field as they were on it. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com for more information. Jake Laser was here earlier today in Hawaii. Great stuff. I believe Jay is a co-founder of, of this organization, doing fantastic work with his MMA gym, right. bringing people together through workouts and sports and being productive and a lot of us recognizing what these veterans have gone through and trying to help them assimilate back into society. So first down and the carry is to Burkhead. He likes that spin move, doesn't he? That's yes, the he second does. time he's used it up to the 30-yard line. When you've been waiting four years to play, <laughs> you're, you're going to break it out more than once. <laughs> you might try it out a few things. I'm telling you, Tom, though, if you go back to junior year tape at Nebraska, and watch Rex Burkhead and what he did for his Cornhusker team, running it, catching it, blocking, return, get, return guy. But it, 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 it hurt my heart to see him get hurt his senior year. Amir Abdullah emerged on the scene, who's now with Detroit. But Rex Burkhead, he's a player who lines up in the slot here. You know, it's interesting to notice Dalton's going to run this one. That's a quarterback design run all the way. It's the first down of the 41. You know, getting back to Burkhead for a second and about what he, the cleats for a cause today. You know, he's been so involved in the, in the area. Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Children's Hospital here is the number one children's pediatric cancer hospital in the world. And this guy has been a part of that ever since he uh, came to Cincinnati from Nebraska. 
And as Peter Schrager mentioned, still well involved with Jack Hoffman, the young man who's doing quite well right now. And his family, it wasn't just a one-time thing for him. Burkhead again. You know, we, all, we talk about Burkhead, and you bring him up because, you know, there are a lot of guys on a lot of different teams around the NFL. They'll come in, they're a low-round draft choice, they're stuck behind one, if not two or three guys. You'll see them in the preseason, you'll say, God, does he look good, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, they look spectacular. But then when the year begins, you never say their name again. Right. And that is why, uh, you know, Burkhead, who could be a free agent at the end of the year, at least some other teams are going to have a chance to get a look at him now. He's able to put some plays on tape now. And Cincinnati understands his value as well. Remember, when they're down in receivers, they can split it out for him there. How about that? Dalton started to walk away, and they direct snap it to Jeremy Hill. Uh-oh. That looks like Andrew Whitworth down there injured for the Bengals. They're all pro left tackle. And he is in some incredible pain. Trying to get to his feet. Notice he's going to want to walk it off. And <laughs> tough guys like that, they don't want to stay down. Whitworth is on the left side, I believe, at tackle. And there was the little bit of a trick play. See him drive blocking there, and then he gets cut underneath by one of his own players. I think it was Jeremy Hill on the run. Yep. Everybody's trying to open up the playbook a little bit here, and there's Whitworth on the sideline. And I know one thing about that big guy. If there's any way possible, he'll be back out there. There is no doubt about it. Jake Fisher has come in at least temporarily, although they will not run another play until the clock runs out here in the third quarter. Dalton and the Bengals 15 minutes away from winning for the first time since October. One quarter of football left to go. Bengals led 19-0, eventually went up 29-0 before Philadelphia scored the touchdown on its last possession. Ball from the Cincinnati, 47, a third down and four. Over here. Over here. Back up. Quick slant to Burkhead. Pretty nifty moves there, and then he put it on the ground. And the Eagles say they recovered it. Burkhead, a couple of really nice moves to get additional yardage, and then lost the handle. And that's the quickest way a Philadelphia team has a chance to get back in it if they have recovered. Look, we're still 14-51 to go. This thing's long from being over. And there it is. There it is indeed. And you're so right about Burkhead. They split him out wide, and he's played some receiver for Cincinnati. And right there, nice hustle. Who's that coming from the back? Benny Logan. Benny Logan from his defensive tackle position. Rushes the passer first, comes back into the secondary, and makes it and forces the fumble by Burkhead. That's recovered by Philadelphia. That's big time hustle by the defensive tackle, Benny Logan. Defensive line of Philadelphia has been under a lot of fire, especially Fletcher Cox. Yeah, I've watched a lot of tape of them recently, and I'm not going to absolve Fletcher Cox of everything, okay? When you're, when you're that guy, you've got to make some plays. But, Tom, every play, he's getting double. Sometimes they chip a guy, make it a third guy. The other guys have to start winning their one-on-ones and, and then helping yeah. him out a little bit. First down, they swing it out to Darren Sproles. It's a shame we're seeing Sproles here on this Sunday. Playing with that fractured rib, this guy has had some kind of career. 33-year-old Kansas native, the eighth most all-purpose yards among all players in the history of the NFL. And still an outstanding player. No doubt about that. Catch made on the far side, and that's another first down to Burton. pretty throw there by Carson Wentz and this is where things get difficult for his offensive line because Cincinnati can just pin their ears back and go with the score this big in their advantage and they held up well in protection and Wentz delivers a nice throw catch by Burton before Iloka takes him over the sideline come forward come forward Come 
Third down and four. And a good throw by Wentz. Green Beckham. For a first down to the 45, let's go down to Peter Schrager. Tom, we saw Andrew Whitworth leave the field. Questionable to return. It's a leg injury. The 11-year veteran you probably won't see him back today. That may be more precautionary than anything else with Andrew Whitworth. You know that big guy wants to play. Wentz down the middle, and it's intercepted. And then into the arms of Williams. I looked ahead. It was going backwards. Fumbled the ball, it looked like anyway, into the arms of Williams. See what happened here. Juggled it, popped it in the air, INT. It is sponsored by Verizon. It's always a great gift on Verizon. Carson Wentz throwing into some. Well, an area code with a lot of orange jerseys here a moment ago, which ultimately leads to an interception. And the Bengals have the football, a 29-7 lead, 13-45 to play. They put it back in the hands of Burkhead, who fumbled a moment ago. Tom, let's take a look at the interception, because we're going to try and get this down the middle, but watch the coverage. Because I believe this is Ber Burfitt right there. Look at that, right there. Okay, so he's already released the ball, but Burfitt is running with him. Look at Ioloka here, and watch Sean Williams here. This is what you love about the synchronization. Perfect with good coverage underneath. Ioloka gets the overthrow. As it pops into the air, it turns into an interception. Why? Because Sean Williams hustled all the way from one side to the other to be at the ball and intercept it. Second and five, and batted down at the line of scrimmage with an eye on Boyd on that Chris Slamp pattern. So a third down for the Bengals. See a lot of balls batted in recent weeks in the NFL, haven't we? I mean, it just feels like this is just all of a sudden everyone has figured out getting those passing lanes. Get your hands up. I, I've wondered that for years because so many of these defensive linemen, whether they're interior defensive linemen or, of course, the defensive ends, I mean, almost every one of these guys across the board, 6'2", 6'3", if not bigger than that. Yeah, at a minimum. At a minimum. We're talking 6'5", 6'6", we're seeing today. Swat passes away. Dalton on a third down. Looked like a little miscommunication there. Boyd looked like he had pretty much just sat down for the first down, and Dalton trying to lead him up the field, and it's three and out for the Bengals. Yeah, I actually think this one is probably actually on Andy Dalton because, as you said, watch Boyd, 83. Just sits right down there. Now, maybe Boyd's supposed to continue into that spot, but that's one of the few inaccurate throws that Dalton has made today. Darren Spoles, seven punt returns for touchdowns in his career. He's dropped to the 39, a uh, 12.57 to go. Twelve fifty-seven to go. 29-7 Cincinnati, some of the numbers for the Eagles. They've really been unable to run it. That's something they very much wanted to do coming into the game, but they fell behind right from the get-go. They wanted to get 30 runs out of their running back position. But when you're down 19 to nothing, 26 to nothing, that strategy goes out the window. Saw the numbers on Wentz, 15 of 31, a touchdown, two interceptions, 164 yards. And they'll be slinging it around to start this drive. Yeah, they'll be in two-minute offense, essentially, the rest of this game. Trying to trying to make up this ground. Another short completion, but it is a first down. Right to midfield into the hands of Darren Sproles. So if you're a backup defensive lineman for Cincinnati now, you should have your helmet on and be up near the sideline because if this drive continues, they may have to need to sit, they may need to sub out some pass rushers. It's very tiring trying to chase the quarterback around. Pump fake and now Wentz able to get out of trouble finds Green Beckham and he is shot by on by Denoy to the 40 
six yard line. Geno Atkins applying the heat. Nice completion, but watch this. Watch Atkins. Look at him just push oh. Brandon Brooks back oh. into Wentz. Nice job by Wentz having the poise to handle that and escape and complete a pass. But Geno Atkins is one tough guy. Not only one tough guy, I mean, that Zerts on the completion and Ray will run him out of bounds. That is a one arm shove <laughs> into a man who weighs 335 pounds. Geno Atkins is all the way back in terms of health. Remember a couple years ago he had the knee injury and they thought he didn't play as well the next season and last year back in the Pro Bowl and back at all pro status. That play tells you why. Look, raw numbers with Atkins doesn't tell you everything. We saw a play earlier, took on two blockers, right. set it up for Carlos Dunlap to get to the quarterback. Hard to move that big number 97 in the interior. Here comes a blitz. Wentz gets it away, and the completion is made to Turner, and that's a first down to the 35-yard line. Good decision there by Wentz to get rid of it in a hurry. You just see the continued development of him. You know, a guy who's had a tough day with people in his face, harassed all the time, but I don't see him flinching. That's the thing about a young quarterback. You often see them, you know, kind of, you know, try, try to turtle a little bit to get away from a rush. He stands in there tall and delivers. Stands tall again and has it batted right back into his arms and he takes off running. How about that? The batted ball by Will Clark, and it turns into, what, a seven-yard game. See right there, Clark bats it back to him like it's volleyball at the net. And Wentz grabs the excellent instincts and reflexes, grabs it, and immediately heads straight upfield to gain yardage. Is that the first completion Brett Favre had in his career? Like that one that came right back to him? Second down and appears to be a little bit short of another first down. So third down and a yard. Under 10 minutes to go now in Cincinnati. And we are getting some swapped out defensive linemen for Cincinnati as well. Clock will stop at 9.41. Tomorrow on Undisputed, Skip and Shannon debate the college football playoff and the weekend's NFL action. Undisputed with Skip and Shannon, weekdays at 9.30 Eastern on FS1. Charles, the uh, four teams in the college football playoff, number one, Alabama, number two, Clemson, number three, Ohio State, number four, Washington. You've been a big part of college football for a long time. Your thoughts, did they get it right? I think that ultimately they did. If I'm Penn State, I have a problem with it because I just won the Big Ten Championship and I beat Ohio State. I think Ohio State's overall resume and ledger a little bit better than Penn State. But if you play head-to-head, -head, remember, Michigan whacked Penn State. Ohio State beat Michigan. So that may have had something to do with it as well. Dangerous throw, and oh, my. Two players involved on that vicious collision. Perfect of the Bengals and Green Beckham of Philadelphia. And Perfect is able to wobble to his feet, and Green Beckham is still down. Oh, my goodness. Sponsored by Samsung Pay. Turn your phone into your wallet. Green Beckham just now getting to the sideline. Perfect was able to get there moments before him. And Perfect coming over. Conscious to just use the shoulder to get his head out of it and really didn't take the full body He just caught a piece of it does enough that both of them ended up hurt Let's see if Cincinnati wants to blitz this play here. I don't think they want to sit back on fourth and short Fourth down and a yard Hey, you want to go out? Hey, three seconds Kill, kill We got Watch that Looking for that slant again, and again they get it, it's Aguilar, he takes a big hit, spins out of it. And a first down, Aguilar, inside the 20. The numbers won't be super impressive at the end of the day, but if you're Philadelphia, you'll have to be encouraged by some of the things you saw from Nelson Aguilar today. Remember, he was a healthy scratch last week, Peter Schrager talked about it, that catch there was not easy. 
Wentz swings it to Sproles, and he'll step out of bounds. Just short of a 10. This day has to help his confidence, even though the team is down. Some tough catches, picked up a key first down there to keep this drive alive, keep them in it. That was big for Nelson Aguilar. Second down and three. And Burton unable to reel it in, and we send it downstairs before this third down to Peter. Tom, you guys mentioned Vontez Burfick. I'm watching on the sideline. This guy, they didn't have him the first three games, but he is the energy, the emotion, and he is the one who is the vocal leader on the sidelines. He gets to that hit with Doriel Green Beckham. He's on the field the next play, and he's coaching him up. They didn't have him the first three weeks of the season. He is fully back. Hey, Peter, you know what Paul Gunther, the defense coordinator, told me about him? That one day, he would make a heck of a coach because of his intelligence on defense. Pro Bowl linebacker last week just had an incredible game in Baltimore. Third down and sacked. Pair of Bengals in there, Deshaun Williams 69 and again Dunlap 96. Let's see why they were able to get to him because I thought the protection was pretty good initially, but once again the coverage and there's Vontez Perfect. That's called collisioning the low crosser. Did you see that? As he yeah. crossed over, he collisioned him and knocked him out of the play, and that held it up for Dunlap and Williams to get there. All right, so fourth down again. They converted fourth down in the yard just a moment ago. Ball at the 14. And there's that crossing pattern again, and again it's Aguilar. And that is a first down to the five-yard line. All they did was flip the side of the field. Before it's from the left side, this time it's to the right side, and it's the same slant pattern. And how about Carson Wentz again? Standing in there, fires a strike as he takes the shot from the backside for a first down. Carlos Dansby who hit him there, veteran linebacker here, Sproles. And he's to the two-yard line with the clock continuing to run, closing in on seven minutes. And the Eagles need three more scores. Green Beckham on his way back to the locker room. Hey, what, this is a battling, scrambling drive by the Philadelphia Eagles. Converting some fourth downs. Trying to get the ball into the end zone. And getting into the end zone, it is Darren Sproles for the touchdown. Philadelphia not done yet. Look at the push that you get from the offensive line. Kelsey 62 right in there. Brooks 79. Barber 76. Created just enough space. Look at him running through the initial tackle. Almost a face mask there for the guy they called at Kansas State, Tank Sproles. Point after makes it a two-score game. See, Whitworth looks like he's ready to come back into this game. I'd like to see them tell him that he can't. <laughs> exactly right. Point after is good by Sturgis. 15 plays, took six minutes. Fifteen plays, the longest in a scoring drive this season for the Philadelphia Eagles. They brought it within a two-score game. They need a two-point conversion somewhere after one of two more touchdowns. Looks like a timeout by Cincinnati. Well, high school football wrapping up around the country. Division two, LaSalle High School here in Cincinnati won their third straight. Division II state championship. Big thanks to Jeremy Roush at Fox 19 here in Cincinnati for the footage. And near and dear to the heart is LaSalle High School of one. Brent Selleck, that's his alma mater. His mom and dad own three hair salons here in town. They got to do a lot of work on him, as you can tell. All evidence to the contrary? <laughs> that's right. Say, but you talk about a pro. Oh, there's no doubt. Okay, a guy a that everybody career, wants on man. their team. Has been a guy who's caught a ton of passes in the past. Now he's even being more of a mentor blocker. Missed one game in his entire NFL career. We're talking about double-digit seasons. Okay, looks like onside kick coming, guys. Yep. 
They've got Burkett up there. They've got Hewitt. They come the other way. And that was easily fielded by Brandon LaFell. So you'll see, as Tom described, you see Sturgis aiming right, bringing it back left, goes right through the gap. You see Cedric Pierman 30, lets the ball go to LaFell and is going to block. That was well executed by Cincinnati. And there's A.J. Green, who we saw get hurt against Buffalo on the second official snap of the game, a hamstring injury. And they still are hopeful that he'll be back before the season is over. He is the only receiver in the history of the National Football League to have five straight 1,000-yard receiving seasons to begin a career and go to the Pro Bowl five times. Here's Burkett. He's trying to join Randy Moss as the only two with six 1,000-yard receiving seasons to begin a career. Isn't that right, Peter Schrager? Yeah, look, guys, it's a great two tear. It was 50% torn off, but no surgery needed. And I was there before the game watching him run. He looks all right, and he said, hey, look, Week 17, I'm going to be back there. Whether I win this or not, if I can get back on the field, I will play. His quote was, I'm not that type of guy. I don't bail out on my team because we're not having the season we may want to have. So we could see him back before the season's over. Peter, he's at 964 yards right now to try and get that sixth season that Tom described. He gets back week 17. I believe he'll get it. Well, it gives you an idea. This is basically the third full game. As they throw that one to Jake Fisher, that's a play you brought up earlier, and he fumbles the ball. And now, all of a sudden, you run a play that turns out initially to look good. And now, all of a sudden, I'm sure some sitting around here are saying, why are we getting cute with six minutes left in a game? In a game that you desperately need. And Jake Fisher handling the football well, but doesn't protect it because Nigel Bradham does a really nice job of recognizing that ball's out. See where Fisher has it? That's not tucked high and tight. There's no four points of pressure there that, you, that you're taught to hold the football with. And Bradham punches it free, and the Eagles continue to have life here. See, that's, that's one of those ones that my old college coach, John Majors, used to say. The only people who should touch the ball are the people who should touch the ball. And now that insult to injury, it looks like Fisher is hurt. And that's too bad because, remember, Andrew Whitworth got hurt earlier. Fisher had to come in. He's been the extra offensive lineman today. He had to come in and play left tackle. I think Whitworth's back and playing again. And remember, Cedric Oboye, he got benched today. So Eric Winston's carried the load at the right, on the right side. You hate to see that with, with, with a young offensive lineman that they're trying to develop get hurt on a play like that. Now the Bengals spent their top two picks in the draft a year ago on offensive linemen. Oh boy, he in the first round, they go with Fisher in the second round to try and lay the groundwork for another, you know, good, outstanding run of offensive linemen. Let's go back to Los Angeles and check in with Carissa. Thanks, Tom. We head to the frozen tundra, which it is today, of Lambeau Field. Green Bay trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Early fourth quarter, all tied up. Aaron Rodgers connects with Jordy Nelson for this 32-yard score. Green Bay up. 14-7, Tom, Charles, and Peter. Wow. That's just, I mean, is that the perfect tableau right there? I mean, Green Bay, Lambeau, Snow, and there's Ken Zampezi, the offensive coordinator, who called that last play. And you know, that's the thing about Cincinnati. They're very exotic in their playbook. With Jim Schwartz, the defense coordinator from Philadelphia Tells, they have a lot of offense. They have more offense than you can prepare for. So you have to rely on keys and being fundamentally sound. That's one he may want back because they had a chance to really try and ice this ball game. All right, so now all of a sudden Wentz and the Eagles down by two scores in under six minutes to go. A first down completion of Sproles, and they really got to pick it up now. Yeah, you've got to jump up your speed in your two-minute. Carson Wentz directing now. Guys have to get back to the line of scrimmage and get set to go. Well, it took him 15 plays, 60-plus yards, six minutes to score the last time. And here's a catch stepping out of bounds, and it's Burton at the 38-yard line. See Jake Fisher getting some attention on his left leg there. Certainly hope he's going to be okay. So if you're Cincinnati now, you, the key to them is how many plays can you make Philadelphia run? How much sure. time can you take off the clock? Philadelphia needs to strike quickly. All day to throw it, but the ball batted down at the line of scrimmage once more. It's happened nearly half a dozen times in the game today. 
So who got to this one? Wearing an orange shirt. Dunlap. But there's a stunner for you. Shocking. Carlos Dunlap with another deflection. He has an innate sense on how to do that. Trying to set up the screen to Sproles. And he's able to evade a couple of tacklers, but stays in bounds to the 35-yard line. Under five minutes to go. That's Lane one, beginning to lightly fall as well. That's one of the greatest plays I've seen that didn't get you a whole lot because Carlos Gansby should have snuffed that play out for a loss. And somehow he made him miss when he was right on top of him. Rolls out, Barner in for 40 to go. Get it away in time, but short of a first down. That's an excellent play made by Adam Jones on Turner. And it brings up fourth down. What have they done on their fourth down plays on the last drive? Slants. Yep. Nelson Aguilar, they just threw a slant there to Turner. Aguilar is in the ball game, split out wide. Here he is. He's ready. He caught two slants for fourth down plays before. There's another one. And it's picked off. That is perfect down the sideline, and he's still on his feet, and Wentz knocks him out of bounds inside the 20, and that'll tie a ribbon around this one. I mean, he just snatched that thing out of the air. There cannot be an inside linebacker in the NFL playing at a higher level right now than Vontez Burfitt. Starts on the rush. Stops a little bit to kind of read the play, and that ball is thrown right between the five and the five. And I got to tell you, that's not an easy catch. From that distance with a bullet pass, and there he goes with another interception. I'll say it again. There cannot be a middle linebacker in the NFL playing at a higher level right now than Vontez Burke. Well, there, there's no doubt him. about it, Charlie. I mean, you know, look, there are a lot of people that aren't going to give him the credit that, that maybe, you know, he should get as a football player because of some of the, you know, through the whistle, beyond the whistle, some of the hits. Everybody remembers what happened in the playoff game last year, the shot to the head on Antonio Brown, which led to his three-game suspension to begin this year. But it cannot be denied. Vontez Perfect is an outstanding player. He's among the best linebackers in the NFL. And remember, as you mentioned, Tom, mentioned missed the first three games of the year due to NFL suspension. I think one game, two games ago, became the leading tackler for the season for Cincinnati. Made up all that ground. Well, looking ahead to next weekend, Seattle and Toronto aiming to make history as Jordan Morris and the Sounders take on Josie Altidore and Toronto FC, who will host the MLS Cup Saturday, 7.30 Eastern, only on Fox, or watch it live on Fox Sports Go. A lot of the crowd beginning to file out of here. The Bengals trying to get their first win since they beat Miami at the end of October back here. They've had a tie. They've had four losses since then. It's amazing it's been that long for them. <laughs> Jeremy Hill to the 20. And meanwhile, for the Eagles, you know, some people say, well, look, their chance weren't all that great anyway but the bottom line is they did have a chance you get a win here today you've got three of your final five at home all three against teams inside your division as you look at their schedule but it's a big hit here today yeah just what you mentioned inside the division Washington at home then da New York Giants at home Dallas at home to finish things off but this is a big big miss and we sat with Doug Peterson last night and I know Eagles fans are like well we weren't going any as you said maybe we weren't going anyway but as he discussed, look at the schedule ahead of us. Here's the opportunity, guys. One game at a time mentality. Let's handle Cincinnati and see what it, where it takes us. Well, that's off the table now. All right, now you're talking about turning into a spoiler at this point. And the rest of those teams in your division had better be wary with you. JT! False start. Number 85, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down.
you know, Charles, you go to the other side now, and if you're, you know, a Bengals fan, you're saying, okay, you got to win here today. You go to four, seven, and one. You have three division opponents left. Yes. And remember that the co-leaders are Baltimore and the Steelers at six and five, although Baltimore is going to win today. They are hammering Miami. <laughs> Hill to the 20. And let's check in with Carissa Thompson back in L.A. Thanks, Tom. An interesting situation here in Atlanta. So after an Atlanta score, they go for two, which would put them up three. It backfires with an Eric Berry pick to put Kansas City up one with under five left in the fourth. Kansas City 29-28. Tom? Wow. How about that? And what's interesting to me about that play, all right, you know, now you can score the two points. But last year, what was the issue with Matt Ryan? Throwing picks in the red zone, ill-advised. And this year, it hadn't been, been none of that. No. He's been MVP candidate. And it reared its ugly head on that play. And boy, that's difficult. Great play there by Eric Berry. You, know, you look inside the NFC East, Charles, we know all about the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, very big game later today right here on Fox. The New York Giants quietly under the radar, if you will, if there is such a thing for a team playing in New York. <laughs> uh, playing really good football right now. They go to Pittsburgh. It's a big game coming up. It's a monster game because of the implications we're talking here. Pittsburgh at 6-5. and five. You just mentioned it. Baltimore jumping all over Miami. They're going to go to 7-5, so Pittsburgh right. needs that game in a big way. But how about the Giants, as you said, quietly, well, they won seven in a row. But here's the thing for me, that pass rush is coming along, and that's Giants yeah. football. The 38-yard field goal try by Nugent. Off the upright and good. Well, maybe the tide has turned for Mike Nugent. Maybe it was that hit on Kenyon Barner on that big kickoff return a moment ago. But he got a little frustration now. And you remember when we were here for the Buffalo game, it was the right upright that he hit twice and missed the points after touchdown. This time he plays the left upright and doinks it through. So good for Mike Nugent. The issue has not been the field goals for him. The issue has been the points after touchdown. So look at what we saw today. The first touchdown that Cincinnati scored, Tom, he puts it through, but look, he kept it on the same hash, and that's the second yep. one, and he missed, and look what he did. He adjusted and moved to the middle for his third attempt. So the first one he made from the hash, the second one he missed from the same hash, he adjusts and goes to the middle to make the third point after touchdown. That's an adjustment he made, confidence, all those things, but field goals, he's been perfect today, even with that assist right there. Well, you figure the young man was due for one. I mean, Philadelphia fans are probably throwing stuff at the television, <laughs> but uh, I mean, you got to have a little bit of a heart. This guy's been a good kicker for a long time in the NFL, and this has been a rough stretch. Harder from the goal line, or rather Smallwood, and he has dropped right there at the 12-yard line. Well, the Bengals scored for the first time in 117 games on each of their first six possessions of the game. First time in a rookie year of Wentz. He's thrown three picks in a game and perfect his first career game with a pair of interceptions. He's been all over the field along with Dunlap and Geno Atkins. I thought that Wentz played today with a lot of poise, a lot of maturity. But he throws, he's thrown a few in the coverage. He's going to have to learn, obviously. See all that color downfield. Wrong color shirt. You can't go in that direction. Trying to pick some throws in that just weren't there. Yeah. The 245 and counting, and Wentz just starts to put it up. And the catch is made by Ertz. Numbers are going to look pretty good for Ertz, but when it was still a game, or at least something close to a game, he only had two catches for six yards, and now they're starting to pile up these last couple of drives. Seven of them now, 58 yards. And that surprised me, frankly, because at the top of the game, I thought Ertz was going to be a big part of their game plan. And he wasn't much of it while the game was still in doubt. You know, it's interesting, Charles, you and I both thought that, that both the tight ends, in fact, they went in the same draft in 2013, Ertz and Eifert. And Eifert has not been a big part of the game. Yes, he had a touchdown, but... 
two catches, 25 yards, and they both came on the same drive in the second quarter. Yeah, the last drive before the half, essentially, right? So the neither tight end figured into it, but Eifert wasn't needed. Ertz was. <laughs> and so there's a big difference in the game for you right there. See Doug Peterson calling the play, still trying to get something going. And look, for him, he knows this game is probably pretty much gone. But there's still growth time for his young quarterback. Continuing to run a two-minute offense. Continuing to try and get it downfield. Put some zip behind that one. And Turner on the catch. Mentioned Turner just activated off the practice squad before the game on Monday night against Green Bay. And he has five catches for 78 yards. Good for him. Final play before the two-minute warning. And it's a catch and then a tackle made in the open field by Denard on Turner. Two minutes to go. This game is sponsored by Burger King. Now get 10 nuggets for only $1.49, only at Burger King. Reds Fest over the weekend in downtown Cincinnati and the hometown NFL team with a 32-14 lead over the visiting Eagles with 1.57 to go. That's Burton, and that's another first down to the Bengal 47. Clock continues to run. Bay Wentz has taken a beating here today. I mean, you look at the sack numbers, and the Bengals do not have but one sack. Having said that, this guy's been hit almost a dozen times, and in a number of those, he has really been hit. Five batted balls to go along with the 11 hits on their quarterback. 54 passing attempts today. And here they come after him again. Gets rid of it. And Barner is tackled at the 45. Big pressure again by Atkins. <laughs> and you know what's really frustrating? Watch Geno, 97. Almost a jailbreak to Carson Wentz, yet he doesn't get credit for a sack. All that effort has him in his grasp, and Wentz avoids the sack again. Pressure still getting there. Well, it's interesting we talk about Atkins, and we brought up earlier in the game about all the batted balls and Sarah Spirits, and how, you know, people get wrapped up so frequently over the physical attributes. And, you know, and a defensive tackle. You tell me, Charles, I mean, a lot of people thought Atkins, who was a great player in Georgia, and he slips all the way to the fourth round in the 2010 draft. He's been to four, four Pro Bowls. It would be more than that if he didn't hurt his knee. Let's check in with Carissa back in L.A. Thanks, Tom. America's Game of the Week coming up next. Giants winners of six straight facing Big Ben and the Steelers. Both members, of course, of that illustrious 2004 quarterback class and have a couple rings each. It's all coming up next. Should be a good one, Tom. Well, see, I had said the Giants had won seven spurts, so no Pittsburgh fans. I wasn't putting it in the win column. I was just wrong. Incomplete. Well, that happens every <laughs> th th Thank you. Thank you, Car you, thank you, Carissa. The sixth straight is still pretty impressive. But, you know, I want to get back to Atkins for yeah. a minute. I mean, at the end of the day, and you cover the NFL draft and the combine every year, how do you get scared off from a guy who's six feet tall? Each team has their own set of criteria, some measurables that they're looking for, some measurables that they're not. Certain things happen where all of a sudden there's a run on guys or positions that may change things. So many things go into a bottom line. Cincinnati got a steal. Well, look, the Bengals passed him up the first three runs. Yep, so, I mean, exactly. It happened. Alone. It happens. That's incomplete as well. And remember, his father was an NFL defensive back. How many times do you get that? Where you see the dad, Gene Atkins, who was a terrific player in the NFL, did a nice job. Actually played for our colleague Jimmy Johnson in Miami. That's right. 
And he ends up having a son who's a massive, great defensive tackle. Yes, he is. 300-yard passing day for Wentz, but he's been intercepted three times in the game. Fourth down. And he just throws it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. And this time it was Dansby who put the hit on Wentz, and that takes care of that. Well, Paul Gunther, the defensive coordinator, just said, you know something, on this fourth and short, we're bringing everybody at you. We're going to make you make a quick decision under duress. And Carlos Dansby does exactly that. He puts it up there, trying to put some air under it so that Burton can get to it. But it ends up being an incomplete pass in a really nice game, I believe, by the Cincinnati defense to go along with what their offense did, breaking out of their slumber with a monster day as well. There's Paul Gunther, the defensive coordinator, who's got to feel very satisfied with what his troops did today. So the Bengals get the win, 32-14. to 14. 116th career win for Marvin Lewis, the winningest coach in Bengals franchise history stay tuned for the state farm game break show that's coming up right after the conclusion of this one